I'm making this video because not only is this election cycle important, but just things that are going on in this country right now, it's to the point where you either remain silent or you speak the truth and pick a side. At this point, you can't say that you're undecided or that you're uninformed or that you're somehow a moderate and you're neutral. Everything is polarized to two extremes and it has to be that way right now. Uh, you can't be in the middle. If you are in the middle and you are undecided, you have been under a rock for the last really eight years. You've been completely isolated from any reality of what's going on. And uh, you have, on one hand, you have a man, uh, an, an administration, Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, are they perfect? No. Is Trump going to run for pastor? No. Okay. Would I want my daughter to date Trump? Probably not. Okay. Uh, but I don't have a daughter, but if I did and okay, is, has Trump done everything right and perfect? No. Has he said things that I wish he hadn't? Yes. Okay. Uh, did he try to overturn an election, that is a myth, okay? That is a myth that has been shot down even by liberal media sites have had to admit, and I mean liberal media news agencies have had to retract that and say, okay, no. Um, this thing was completely engineered by Nancy Pelosi and it's their battle cry. They have no, they have no, they have no content. They have no solid substance. They have to mudsling. They have no ideas to help our country. They have nothing to offer but Marxist socialism. Okay, They are funding billions of dollars. I think we're at 60 billion plus now. They're funding that to Ukraine. That money is being washed through the corrupt uh, Ukrainian bureaucracy there. A lot of that is going back through Burisma. That is going straight back to the Bidens. The Bidens are have set their family up for life as billionaires, and they're doing it in the guise of financial aid to Ukraine. Whether or not you believe we ought to help Ukraine, yes, I think we should help Ukraine to a degree because it is in our interest to keep Russia from grabbing more power. But at the same time, the Ukrainian government is not this angel that it presents itself to be. Um, Zelensky is not this saint that he portrays. Okay, so I am not at all for Vladimir Putin or for the Russians uh, as a government. I'm not really for the Ukrainians either as a government. I, I wish that this war was over. People getting killed over that either way is, is not a good thing. I think the Ukrainians have far more right to be free from Russia than Russia ever has any right to make claims on them. So, yeah, should we help the Ukrainians? Yes. Should we be giving them the amount of money we are knowing that it is going to a corrupt institute, the most corrupt country in the world, Ukraine, the most corrupt government system in the world, even trumping Russia, even trumping uh, North Korea, okay? These, they're, they're known for their corruption. They are going to wash this money through and we're bankrupting our country. We're allowing gangs from South America and terrorists from multiple nations to enter across our southern border. And we are then funding these people paying for them at the expense of our own veterans, our own impoverished people, our own people who have been hit with this Hurricane Helene. We are actually unable to provide for the folks that have lost everything because most of that funding, Harris and Biden decided to give to illegal aliens who came into this country illegally 
and they might not even be here to be nice. They, they might very likely, and the FBI and CIA both scream and agree this, that many of these people coming in are terroristic people who can pose terroristic threats to this country if they wanted to, and if they all activated at one time and did what they wanted to, it could throw our entire country into utter chaos, which may be exactly what they want, because I do believe their goal is to sow, and, and it is a Marxist thing, you sow enough discord and enough chaos into your country that the infrastructure collapses and then the government has to take over with martial law and then the freedoms that that, that country, the, the level of freedom in that country is then lowered and it will never again come back up. That's their plan. Uh, it's, it's not really original. It's nothing incredibly brilliant or new. It's been used by every communist regime, a socialist dictator in history. Uh, Hitler did it. Mussolini did it. Uh, Mao Zedong did it, Pol Potts did it, Stalin did it, uh, and you, you've got Chavez, you've got Fidel Castro. All these people, these are this is their this are their heroes. They're here the heroes of people like Harris, Walsh, the Clintons, the Obamas. Their heroes are communists and Marxists and socialists. They're not. Their, their heroes are not people like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin. These, they're not their heroes. They quote them. They use them when they need to. Just like people quote, say that I'm a, they'll say, I'm a Christian. Yeah, of course I'm a, yeah, okay, whatever. They'll use that in vain. They don't, they don't believe that. Uh, you read what they write. You listen to what they say. I mean, right now Kamala is using her, one of her lines that she's got down is we have to unburden ourselves from the past. That is directly from Karl Marx. That's Karl Marx's quote. She's saying that over and over again. It's not an accident. These people are being funded by people like George Soros, who worked for the Nazis, and his job was to sort through the Jewish uh, goods that the Nazis took from the Jewish people as they're murdering them and exterminating them. One of his jobs was to go through and sort through this stuff and account this stuff. And that's one of the reasons why he's so incredibly rich. He is rich. For, and he also said it was the greatest job he ever had. It was the best experience working. Uh, his best work experience he'd ever had was doing that. This guy is, is just totally satanically, demonically evil. And he's the one funding all of this stuff. He's the one funding the riots that happen. He funds the... Uh, any kind of civil disrest where people all mass together, these these campus protests, these can and they're not protests, okay? These are campus hostile takeovers and disruptions to public peace. He's funding it. He pays people to go into these places. They don't even know why they're there a lot of times. They're told not to talk to the news. The news will ask them, why are you here? And they just look away. They don't, they don't know what to say because they made a couple hundred bucks to show up there. Uh, they have no clue. It's It's all done by design. They are sowing chaos and discord. Uh, now, whether or not it's totally true what's coming out of North Carolina about a lot of the land that's been destroyed was being sought by the Harris administration or Biden-Harris administration. It's really not Biden. He's, he's, I don't think he knows what day of the week it is. And that's probably a good thing. Uh, I think one, one commentator I listened to said, the best thing Joe Biden can do is be clueless at this point because that's probably a safer route for our country. Um, but I just lost where I was going with that. They're, they're sowing this discord. They're, they're attempting to bring us down to a, a third world status. They don't like the fact that America is an exception to the world. We are the greatest country in the world. That's not a proud, arrogant statement. You just look at it. That's a fact. You go to other countries and people want to leave there and get to America. No one leaves America and flees to go to Nicaragua or to Venezuela. No one's leaving here trying to go live in Russia unless you've, you know, you're trying to hide or you've got, you know, some crazy reason to have to leave here. No one is fleeing here trying to go uh, live over somewhere like Finland. Uh, no one is leaving here, escaping America to try to find a better life somewhere else. People are all over the world are leaving their places to trying to find a better life here, okay? The only other country that even remotely compares with us, really, if you look at it, you have uh, Israel and you have uh, Britain. 
to some degree, which is pretty much being completely overtaken by Islam. Uh, in another 10 to 15 years, the entire political system of Britain, especially uh, England, is going to be overrun by Islam. And yes, Islam is a threat to world peace. Islam is a threat to humanity. Uh, it, it, there is no such thing as, well, you've got the the extremist Islamics and then you've got the moderates. Well, the moderates are, are the cowardly extremists. And you can go and get mad over that or you can go listen to Mossad um, Youssef, the son of the Hamas founder who has a sense come here to America. He is now a Christian. He will tell you all about this. He will tell you that uh, the the moderates are are just radicals without opportunity or courage. That's okay. Uh, we're not saying that every single Muslim out here is planning a terrorist attack. We're not saying that. But in their heart, they are pulling for the day when Islam takes over everything. Islam is not a religion so much as a geopolitical system. The whole basis of Islam is to force the world into submission to Islam and to Allah. And if you want to argue that, then you can have at it. Um, you won't. You won't win that. Uh, just read the Quran. Read the Hadith. And if you think the Quran is messed up, look at the Hadith. But anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. This is going to be all over the place, and that's just the way it is. So we're now faced with an administration that that is trying to become elected. If they actually allow a fair election process, which frankly. If you trust the American democratic election process at this point, you are blissfully naive. You are blissfully, woefully naive, and you are just, you're off in your happy place, and I'm glad you're happy, but you have no clue what's going on. Uh, the 2020 election was manipulated. You can say whatever you want about that. The evidence is there. They didn't want to hear it. Uh, you've got people on both sides of the aisle that know this. You've got both people on both sides of the aisle that have gone along with that. And so it, it is, you know, you, you have this picture of where you have Republican and you have Democrat and they're very different. They're not. They're very close. The Republicans uh, oftentimes are people who simply know how to sound more conservative. Once they're elected, they do kind of do what they want. So I'm not telling you that, like, if you're a Democrat, you have to be a Republican or you're evil or wrong. I'm telling you that. Uh, you've got to choose a group running the country that is going to be less evil than the alternative or less wicked than the alternative, less li liberal than the alternative. And even old-fashioned Democrats, old-school Democrats like John, uh, like, uh, oh no, no, never mind him, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> but you have people like... Uh, Mr. Kennedy, who just endorsed Trump, and he's come out and he is totally saying, he's saying, look, this is not the Democrat Party that my father, John F. Kennedy, uh, was for. This is not the party that even uh, people like Franklin Delano Roosevelt were for. This is an extreme, left-wing, radical, uh, crazy faction that literally wants to destroy the republic. Now, this is going to lose some of you. I personally believe that when you study American history and you study the United States and you study the American Civil War or the war between the states, I believe the republic in many ways died there. Okay, and we are now living in what I will call the empire. I see this as a direct parallel between the Roman Empire. I'm a huge Roman history fan. Uh, and so when I study Roman history or American history, I see alarming parallels. The Roman Empire the, the Roman Empire uh, was long lasting, but the freedom and the beauty of the Roman Republic died when Julius Caesar did what he did. And I, of course, you could argue he had a lot of he had some justification for doing some of what he did, but he obviously went way too far with it. So the Republic died uh, under the Lincoln administration. Now, say what you want about Lincoln, and I don't have time to go through all that. Uh, Lincoln made Obama look 
really good when it comes to constitutional law. Lincoln violated the Constitution in so many ways, we will never have the level of freedom that we had prior to the American Civil War. Prior to that war, it was a mutual contract between states to allow a federal government to represent us and to oversee things, not to dominate each state. So there is, there is federal government is a representation, supposed to be a representation of the states, of a consensus of the states. Ever since that war, it was proved through that war that the power does not lie in state government and state sovereignty, but the actual power, not, not, not the... Not the rightful power, but the actual power rests in the absolute rule of the federal government. And that war was, yes, the secession was a large part over slavery. Yes, every state did secede with slavery as its number one cause or, or one of its top causes. I'm not sure about every single state. I know someone's going to go look that up and mis, you know, say I had misquoted that. But secession was in a large part to do with slavery. However, that war was all about forcing these states to bend the knee to the all-powerful federal government. Uh, secession was 100% constitutional, and it was 100% it was legal. And yet, if they allowed any of the states to secede, it would undermine the absolutist federal government that the radical Republicans of the time wanted. And Lincoln knew that. And Lincoln had to do everything he could to keep this country under one umbrella, not in the sake of unity, for unity's sake, but rather for the consolidation of federal power. So when Lincoln issued his Emancipation Proclamation, which had nothing to do with freeing slaves, it freed no slaves. Congress freed slaves after Lincoln was dead, after the war was over. Congress freed the slaves. Not one slave was set free by the Emancipation Proclamation. It was done, and it's and you can read it. Uh, only the slaves in southern states are now free. The slaves in the north, which there were tons of them, almost you know not as many as the south, but very close, they're not free. Okay, the the, the border states uh, out west, they're not free. That's staying there. But all slaves that the Southerners possess, those are free. So Lincoln, Lincoln said many, he said it very plainly in writing and in speeches. Uh, if I could do anything to save the Union with or without freeing one slave, I would do it. He did not care about slaves. Uh, he wanted to sh ship them all back to Liberia. So, you know, when Lincoln is hailed as this great racial equality guy, it, it Okay, if you actually read what he says and what he wrote and what he did and did not do, that, that is a myth of American history that is, that is um, kept alive by the empire. The empire is what we're in now. And in, yes, it's still better than any other country you could live in, but it has, as the Roman Empire was, and if you look at the Roman Empire, yes, it, it, from a legal perspective, from a freedom perspective, from a um, civil law and peace and order perspective, it was the greatest empire in the world at that time. But it had problems, just like we do. And those problems are compounded when they entered into the empire phase. And that is where we have been since 1861, essentially, but 1865 sealed it. Okay, so we, we are in the empire phase. And now, uh, again, we are facing a very crucial moment in our history where we are, we are wanting to move from the empire to a almost a totalitarian dictatorship that is run by the federal government, run by the White House, run by a select few people that are in power. And it's not Kamala. Okay, it's not Biden. They are not in charge. That is an illusion. There is a shadow government. And I know this sounds crazy. If, if It sounds crazy. But if you've paid attention and actually know what's going on, you understand that the, the, the more conspiratorial you sound, uh, the more informed you probably are. And that's pretty sad that we've reached that, that point in our history. 
So there's a, there is a group of people that are controlling things. Uh, Kamala is just the front runner. Uh, in honesty, if you want to if you want to give one person credit for who's actually really running this country, it's probably Barack Obama at this point, uh, or with Michelle. Okay, so Kamala Harris is just kind of a filler. She's going to fill in, and maybe she makes it through this election. Maybe she goes down. Either way, uh, she's not the end game. The end game is probably going to be Michelle Obama, uh, either possibly for this election. Who knows? I mean, we've already seen two attempts on Donald Trump's life. Both these attempts have Democrat Party written all over them. Uh, the, the Secret Service is an absolute joke. The FBI is an absolute joke, and I'm not I'm not trying to insult every single person in there on the bottom level, but the leadership of the FBI, the CIA, the uh, Secret Service is an absolute joke, and it's been made so by leftist policies and appointed people who've been appointed in those positions. They're not elected. Uh, we didn't have a say in who they were. They've been appointed. And they are a weaponized arm of the empire, of the federal government. And I will be very surprised if Donald Trump is still alive on election night. Well, or especially, uh, if, even if he wins the election, I will be completely shocked. First of all, if he actually is allowed to become president. I don't think they're going to let him walk in the White House. I don't think Donald Trump will ever set foot in the White House again as president. Even if he wins the election fairly, they're going to either kill him or find some way to remove him or incapacitate him. They've all, they have all—they—they literally missed him by, what was it, like a tenth of an inch uh, from getting into his cranial cavity. So, and then again, uh, one... Secret Service agent just so happened to look over and see a barrel sticking out of an area. And I have worked in the security industry uh, in the past, and I've also done like private, um, like church security, and even like kind of neighborhood watch kind of things. You could literally hire a neighborhood watchman who would do a better job of protecting someone than they were doing that day. Yes, the guys who were with him did great, fine. But their system failed, their leadership failed, their decision-making failed. Uh, you don't fail all of your primary assessments of threats. You don't, you don't fail your initial perimeter assessments. You don't fail your standard operating procedure. You don't fail your, uh, your structural operational procedures and then say, well, because one lone member of our squad came through on a one in a million win, we did a great job. Uh, the, the, the woman, uh, <laughs> they, I won't even name her, but the woman who sat there in front of Congress and refused to answer any questions or take any blame or even admit that there had been a problem, uh, this is indicative of the kind of people who are trying to run our country. It is it, the, the hardest thing for me is trying to figure out, are these people really that stupid and incompetent, or are they just really diabolical, and they're portraying themselves to be inept and incompetent so that they can get off and not be prosecuted, okay, or, you know, interrogated as, as being agents against the state, uh, so my, my question is not like, are they incompetent or are they evil? My question is like, which one is the bigger factor? Obviously, both are there, but which one is greater? I, I, who knows? Okay, so uh, you, you've got a woman who got, and I'm talking about Kamala. Uh, you've got a woman who got where she is literally by sleeping with higher powered political people and she has worked her way up that ladder that way she didn't she is she is a sleaze bucket she is she is she is a uh a whorish woman i don't know how to put that very uh nicely but she is not anyone 
deserving, worthy, or even qualified to be where she is. She has literally worked her way up the ladder through promiscuity. Okay, it's not through achievements. Uh, she can talk about prosecuting gang members and doing whatever she wants. She put a lot of innocent people away, even when she knew they were innocent, but she wanted her prosecu prosecutorial ratings to be high. So this is not some uh, woman who has really earned her way to where she is. No, not at all. Uh, and, and, and the Democrats know that. And the media knows that. They don't even try to deny this. They don't even try to fight it. They don't even try to uh, refute it. They they know this is true. Uh, she does, she tries to look, every time she tries to endear herself to people, she has to lie. And she's amazing at it. She just lies. She can look at you in the face and tell you the sky is orange or blue or, or green and doesn't matter what she says, she she just protrudes this lying confidence. Uh, and she can look at you, I mean, you, you have Biden and her can look you in the face and say, we did a great job with getting out of Afghanistan. The most embarrassing, horrific, catastrophic, inept, almost, I will say treasonous, military withdrawal in American history that makes Vietnam look like a picnic and they will look you in the face we did a great job we did an absolutely fantastic it's like the the case of the emperor's new clothes the emperor is not wearing any clothes he's he's in his underwear looks like an idiot everyone knows it but no one is bold enough to just laugh out loud and say this is stupid uh they want to go along with it and it's 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 really hard to hide it because the military knows this. The military, I mean, you've got Tim Walsh saying he's in combat, he's been shot at, he's all this thing, all this, and the people that serve him, like, no, you were never. This is a lie. You're you're. It's false valor. It's actually a federal crime to use military achievements or accomplishments to try to engender favorites or favoritism or favors or. Um, profit from that. So it's actually a federal crime to do that. And, and the veterans should be furious. Um, I, I have friends that are veterans who went there and got shot at, had to kill people. And this guy wants to come along and try to say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one of these guys. I did that. No, you didn't. And looking at him, I'm not even going to say that. That's, that's childish what I was about to say. Anyway, uh, you've got a guy that wants to put Feminine hygiene items in men's bathrooms for little boys to use in schools. They want, and, and I'm going I'm to end, I guess, with this. I know I've been everywhere. This is a an administration that if they become elected, heaven help us, they are for, and just, just think about this, these things. I'm not going to hit them all. I'm not, I'm not going to remember them all. They are for open borders, and we all know why. It's not because they have compassion against for these these people who genuinely want to come in and make their life better. They need votes. They need illegal votes. They do not play fair in an election. They cannot play fair in an election. Uh, if, if they have fair elections, they will lose. And that is that has been true of every socialistic, communistic, dictatorial dictatorship that has ever arisen. They have, uh, you know, one million in favor, 300 missing, you know, or... Uh, they, we were losing, we needed a, like 10,000 votes and, oh, we found 10,000 votes. There we go. We found it during the night or the machines went down. And when they came back up, the numbers were all corrected to be right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a seven year old can see through it. It's, it's not, it doesn't take a lot of intelligence or, um, brain function to really decipher that. So, you go back and study countries that have that were once free and that are now communist. You can see these same tactics: voter fraud, election interference, and then they want to accuse Trump of that. And the guy who started a lot of that is now going to prison uh, this week because he's been found guilty for lying about it, making it up, and starting this whole wave of trying to accuse Trump of something that was totally made up. He engineered. And now he's going to jail for it. And he should. He should go to jail. He's probably worse than that, really. But he's fortunate. He probably won't do any real time. You know, he'll probably be in some club fed um, fussing about, you know, the, the temperature of the quiche. But anyway, um, 
That's what we're facing. We're facing an administration that wants open borders. They do not care about our citizens. They don't care about us. They don't care about law-abiding citizens, uh, especially if you're a uh, constitution-loving, Bible-holding, gun-owning, um, pro-child, pro-life person. They, they think we are. we need to be eradicated. Now, they can't come out and say we need to literally be killed and eradicated. That, that would make their life so much easier if it were true. But we need to be silenced. We need to be censored. We need to be evaluated as like we are some kind of right-wing extreme terror groups. They are trying to label parents who have a problem with a teacher uh, t telling their little child that they were born the wrong gender and that they should go wear dresses or uh, go get a gender reassignment surgery. They want to tell parents that have a problem with that, yeah, you're a right-wing extreme terror. You're a threat to our society. That is total communism. Not only communism, but it's just flat-out evil. So my point with this whole thing is you can claim to be a Christian all you want. Jesus said, many will come to me in the last day at the judgment and say, Lord, Lord. Many will claim to be Christians. That is worthless in God's eyes. God doesn't care if you claim to be a Christian if you're aligning yourself with views and practices that his word specifically forbids. Uh, Jesus made it very clear that marriage is between a man and a woman. It's not between a man and a man. Jesus never had to redefine marriage. That, that's what you'll hear a lot of times from the, the LGBT community. Well, Jesus never preached against sodomy. No, he said marriage, a man and a woman. He never gave sodomite marriages legitimacy because he did not he he didn't he did not even call them marriages. He he is by default acknowledging that they are not even a marriage. It is so out there in left field that he doesn't even need to identify it as a sin. He doesn't have to be specific. He says marriage between a man and a woman. The Bible is always taught marriage is between a man and a woman. Even nature teaches this. Even birds know better. It's really sad. Uh, that's what got Phil Robinson Robertson uh, banned for a while from A&E, and it got their show canceled and until people revolted, and A&E got their head straight and put it back on. But he said, it's not even natural. Even the animals know better. So even the, even the creation that doesn't have intellect and mental function uh, for reasoning and rationale like a human, even those little animals that are just not even close to a human life, they have more intelligence to know that. Uh, and yet you find you, you find this in, in history. Every great civilization that has ever fallen at some point has accepted sexual perversion as a way of life. Uh, Greece, Rome, all of it. Gone. Fallen. Why? Well, several reasons, and I'll get to that in a minute if I remember. Why not do it now? Why not do it now? Because I will forget. Parallels between the Roman Empire's fall and America. First of all, you have corruption, political corruption. And we are seeing that now. We have the most corrupt president in the history of the world, or the nation. Uh, the most, not the world. I don't want to make that statement. But in, in the history of the United States, we have the most corrupt president ever. Okay, he is giving billions of dollars to Ukraine much of that is coming back, being washed back through through his system, through his companies, through his shell corporations, through Burisma, whatever you want to call those. And their family is set for life, dude. They're making so much money off that. And it's all in the name of, oh, we're giving aid to Ukraine. Right. You're, you're money laundering on a world scale. So what you're doing. And so, yes, they are going to, you know, uh, do very well financially. They are never going to have to worry about their bills ever, okay? And it's all being done at the expense of our country. Uh, we have people in North Carolina right now. I watched a video last night. They're sitting in their house, and there's water up to their chest. They're sitting there, and FEMA is saying, well, we can't really give the kind of aid and help that we would because we're under budgeted now because we gave, or, well, Biden or Harris, probably not Biden. I don't think Biden even knows what FEMA stands for now, but uh, so whoever's running it up there, heaven help us who that is, decided that FEMA should take the majority of their budget and give it to the illegal aliens who have come in. So we have a president, he's still responsible, we have a vice president, 
who's probably more like the president now, who is saying, I am going to take my constitutional duty to protect the American citizenry and to preserve public peace and to promote the general welfare. I'm going to, all these things that I am sworn in to protect, I am going to violate that and give it to the people who broke the law to get in here and that are actually, some of them are actually terrorists, some of them actually are uh, raping, murdering, psychopathic drug cartel gangs. But yeah, you know, they're more important than the, the American citizens who actually legally can vote. It just makes, it's it really infuriating to think about it. Uh, they're sitting in their house literally dying because, you know, they have no food, no water. They can't go anywhere. They're trapped. Uh, if they have elderly people there who need medical equipment or dr medicines, they're not getting that. They're dying and, and having all kinds of problems. They're going to die from that. No, that's not important. What's important to me is to fund these people who, even though they're coming here to hurt our country, I need their vote. That's what we have right now in the White House. And that's what we're facing another four years of. I don't phys I don't really think America will be here in four years. Um, and, and what I mean by that is I don't think the America that you know and that I know as our founding fathers understood it will be here. Uh, we will be irrelevant in world politics. I don't even believe, you know, if you read Bible prophecy, people, you know, I've taught Bible doctrines classes, I've taught history for years, I've taught Bible classes, and people always ask, where is America in world history? Well, the short answer is, we're irrelevant. We are, to when you talk, about, and I'm sorry, where is America in biblical prophecy, not world history, <laughs> biblical prophecy? We're totally irrelevant. Uh, if you want to, and I and I do believe we are mentioned as one of the young lions of Tarshish, Tarshish being Britain. Uh, so you know, you've got Canada, New Zealand, Australia, United States. We are we are the young offspring colonies of Tarshish. We don't do anything uh, when when Israel is attacked by all the Muslim nations around it, and even the Russian coalition that will come down after it has united the Slavic lands under its banner, which is what we're seeing happen now. And I think we really will see it happen once uh, the election goes through. And if if Harris is there, we will have World War III. We will have World War III. Or we'll just have world takeover with no war because America will do nothing to stop it. Uh, we'll have a spineless, incompetent, cackling buffoon at the helm. And we will simply allow the entire world to be destroyed in that way. Uh, by communism. So communism and Islam are the, are the two biggest threats to the world. The biggest threat to America is what's running our country right now. Our biggest threat is not Russia. Our biggest threat is not Iran. It is not uh, North Korea. It is what we have running our country right now. That is our biggest threat. And I'm, 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 I'm this has gone for 37 minutes. Wow. Well, anyway, uh, we also have a, a woman who... I really just want to call her Jezebel because that's that that is that is really descriptive of what she is. She is a Jezebel. She hates God. She hates innocent life. She hates everything that God loves. She hates it. Okay. She hates Israel. Uh, she. It, it's disgusting. Um, is Israel right in everything they do? No. They're one of the largest homosexual countries in the world. But yet the Bible says they are still God's chosen people ethnically. And even though they are rejecting Messiah overall, and that's not true of all of them, but as a nation, they, have, they are rejecting Messiah. They are blind to Messiah. God says there will still be ethnic Israel around. And if you mess with them and try to hurt them, I will judge you for that. When you poke, when you, when you attack Israel, even if they're not saved people even if you, when you attack ethnic jews for the sake of them being jews you are taking your finger and poking it in god's eye so not a very smart idea um hitler Haman, nebuchadnezzar all you look throughout history at all the people who wanted to wipe the jews out god has wiped them out okay when you try to hurt the jews god will hurt you worse Okay, uh, the Muslim nations in the Psalm 83 war, which we very well may be seeing the foundations of that. I mean, man, there have been other circumstances in world history like the Yom Kippur War. You've got the Six-Day War. 
Uh, you've got various other conflicts that looked very similar to that, but if you read the Bible and, and identify who those nations are, which is not that hard, if you get a Bible map out, you can see the lands being described and the people who live there. Uh, it has not yet happened, but it is, it is very possible that it will happen this time. It might not. It might be another thousand years before it happens, but it, it's very interesting. And you have, you know, for up until 1948, Israel is regarded by even many Christians in, in a more Reformed interpretation to be a non-existent thing. God's replaced, the, replaced them with the church. They're not there. And all of a sudden in 1948, you have this country called Israel. It is reestablished, just like God said it would, it gathered from the four winds of the earth, and Israel is reborn into a literal physical nation for the first time in almost 2,000 years. So you cannot deny the existence of Israel and yet we have a administration who will turn their back on Israel. They will, uh, when, when Israel gets attacked, the first thing they want to do is run in and tell Israel to restrain themselves. Okay, if we had experienced what happened uh, in, in October of last year in this country, I mean, we went and literally took out two countries because some Saudis allegedly hit our World Trade Center. And I don't even know that I totally believe that whole thing. Uh, there are a lot of problems in that 9-11 that story that I, that I find, and not just me, but people who are way smarter than me that are um, architects, engineers, pilots. Look at that. And they, there's a lot of really fishy, weird stuff in there. I'm not getting into that now. Um, and if you think I'm a conspiracy theorist... If you didn't already think I was one, you do now. So there you go. Um, but regardless of that, we went and took out like two whole countries that were not even connected to that because they had oil. And yet Israel gets legitimately, uh, Israel gets attacked, unprovoked, um, just attacking people that had nothing to do with whatever the Palestinians want to claim. These people had nothing to do with it. And you're going to go in and murder people. You're going to roast babies in ovens. You're going to rape women in front of their families. You're going to literally cut people up. And we tell Israel, you know, you need to you need to really temper your response. You need to, you know, don't go in and do anything. And then Biden literally tries to leak information to the Palestinians before Israel acts. So Israel has learned, thankfully, to stop telling us what they're going to do and just do it. And not apologize for it. And that's what they need. Um, Bibi Netanyahu, fantastic guy. They're trying to do the same things to him that they've done to Trump here. They're trying to make him to be some kind of criminal. They're trying to get rid of him because the same wicked powers that want to turn this country into something it shouldn't be are trying to do the same thing in Israel, of course. And we know in the end, uh, Israel's going to embrace the Antichrist, whoever that is. And they will ultimately fall for his spell for three and a half years. They will figure it out halfway through the tribulation when he desecrates their temple, which will be rebuilt. So if you see a Jewish temple being rebuilt, you should probably take note of that. But anyway, they have everything ready. There's nothing they need to do except get permission to do it. So if for any reason, and they don't even need to move the Dome of the Rock. That's actually, you can go look that up. The temple is actually... Um, could sit, there's a little gazebo right there on Temple Mount where the Ark of the Covenant would have rested. So they could build a temple there. It would not be probably as big and as, as glorious as Solomon's, obviously, <laughs> or even Herod's, but they could have a temple there and that prophecy could very quickly come to pass. That, that does not take, it would not take long at all. And it could even be that I mean that could be built ridiculously quickly. I mean they could do it under. I don't. I don't know exactly how fast they could do it. But it would not take them a year. It would not probably even take six months. I mean they they would have such resources to put to that. They could do it probably in a couple months, and it would not be a problem. So, um, it would be the most funded Jewish building project since the time of Herod's Temple, probably. Uh, I think that's a correct statement. So, but we have an administration that would rather side with the people who tell their children to strap bombs to themselves and blow up innocent people. That's what we're dealing with. Uh, we also have an administration that hates innocent life. 
Uh, they, they are for euthanasia. They are for killing off the old people. That's what COVID was all about. COVID was population control. And if you don't know that by now, I can do nothing for you. So we're going to create a virus in a lab that we own. We're going to release that virus into America, kill off tons of people. We're going to separate you from your loved ones. We're going to make you wear a mask that does nothing. And we now have to admit that it does nothing. We knew it did nothing, but we wanted to see how far... It was a test run for control. COVID was a test run to see just how far they could push people before people would push back. So it was just a exploratory reconnaissance run on what they would love to do. Um, we're going to then release this virus, and then we are going to magically come up with the vaccines that that you need to take. And by the way, if you don't take it, you're going to lose your job, you're going to lose your house, you're going to lose your livelihood, you're going to get court-martialed if you're in the military, you're going to lose your pension, you're going to lose your retirement. We are telling you what to do, you will comply. And of course, thankfully, much of that ended up the Constitution won in the end, and almost all of that was reversed in court decisions later. Didn't help the poor people who were going through all that for the months that they were, uh, they tried to shut down churches. They tried to find. They actually did find uh, California churches. Uh, I don't know if it was fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a service or something. They tried to tried to make up some thing where every time they held a service, they would slap a statutory fine on them. That was all challenged in court and found to be completely unconstitutional. So you've got a guy like Gavin Newsom, uh, who is definitely probably being looked at to be a future candidate. I'm really shocked he wasn't this time whatever. Uh, and then so you've got this kind of people. They don't like Christians. They don't want people to have, they don't want people in church because if you go to church, you now have some, you have a, you're receiving truth. You're receiving life-giving word from the word of God that is teaching you to have discernment and see through this stuff. It's a spiritual war. It's not a really a physical thing. We are fighting against powers of evil. Uh, the answer is not so much to take up arms and get our country back, although I do believe if our founding fathers knew what we are subjected to now, they would be very upset with us as to why we have not already taken it back over. But that's not what I'm condoning. That's not what I'm saying is really even the answer, because we know in the Bible that we know these things have to happen. We know it has to get worse before it gets better. We, we understand that. So Rising up and fighting the government like some kind of, uh, you know, Wolverine, Red Dawn thing, that's really not the solution. The solution is a spiritual battle that's going on. It is, we are fighting the powers of darkness, we are fighting demonic forces, we are fighting an invisible enemy who manifests itself through physical agents. And this is, unfortunately... Uh, the extreme Democrat Party we're seeing, and not just the Democrats. There are Republicans that are just as bad. There are uh, independents that are just as bad. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna limit it to a political party. There are Republicans who are as liberal as all get out. Yet they talk conservative till the election's over. They know they play a game. It's just a big game. These people go out. These Republicans, Democrats, they go out and play golf with each other all week. They hang out at each other's parties. They're friends with each other. It's not like. It's not like it appears. It's an illusion that there are two polar opposites. It's not really so much. But that's not to say that there are some really good people in the Republican Party and there are some good people in the Democrat Party that have left, okay? Uh, I don't know why it took them so long, but they left, so we'll give them that. Uh, I'm thinking of Tulsi Gabbard. I'm thinking of other people like that. I don't get into the whole list of it, but they're seeing the light. Um, Mr. Kennedy, great thing. Uh, took him a while, yes, but he, he sees it. Uh, I mean, they wouldn't even give him Secret Service protection. I mean, they want they want this guy. They want, Biden wants his opponents to either go to jail or die. Uh, I don't even know if it's Biden that's really wanting that. I don't know if he's capable of figuring that out. But um, I know he is, actually. I mean, I know he, he may have some really serious cognitive issues, but he's got to have moments of some clarity, surely. Or maybe he's not. Maybe that's why he's on the beach, you know, waving at ships when they go by. Um, I don't know. I don't know what goes through his mind, but his handlers know better. Uh, they know this. They want they want Trump to be assassinated. They they put it out there. Oh, we don't have the power to defend him, and we're stretched thin. 
And like our job is not really, we can't guarantee a safety. We can just guarantee that we try to reduce the risk, which is another way of saying, please assassinate him. Please get rid of him. You know, please go out there and do it. And personally, I think, and it's amazing because it's a double-edged sword. When or if they did that, they're then going to turn around and blame it on the assault rifles. Yeah, we got to get rid of assault rifles. We got to get rid of guns. We have to get rid of the one thing standing between our population and complete dictatorial absolute power of the federal government. That is firearms. There is nothing else that you own in your home or that any patriotic American can own that makes the government weary of doing the things that other communist countries have done. They know that there is enough Americans in this country who would resist that they can't do what they want to do. So they have to go. Obama was the smartest one. He went after the ammo. He came the closest, really, to crippling uh, the gun rights in this country. I worked in a gun store uh, during his presidency. And uh, let's see, was this during his presidency? This is right after his presidency. And... It was pretty funny because every time that man opened his mouth, uh, the guys in there said people would come in by the by the dozens and just buy more guns. Like every time Obama opened his mouth about gun control, and I don't I don't think the Democrats really believe they can get the guns. I think they say a lot of this to try to get points with their base. They know there's just no way they're ever going to get the guns. They can't even get the guns from the criminals. I mean. You know, they know these cartels. They know these criminals. Of course, I think they're allowing a lot of these cartels in here. They're allowing fentanyl in. They're getting they're getting kickbacks from that. You know, you don't just get that amount of drugs over a border without somebody being bought off. And that trickles upstream. And so they're getting they're getting bought off for it. They're getting paid to do that. And you you've got a corrupt government that is not caring about its citizens. It does not have your interests in mind at all. Uh, it does not have your well-being in mind. It does not have your physical safety in mind. Uh, case in point, look at what's going on in North Carolina, and I'm going to just let that play out and let somebody else go through all that and talk about all that. It's it's pretty sickening, really. Um, but I better end this here in a minute. I've gone for almost an hour. This is sad. But, and I've talked fast, so sorry. Um, they They literally are the party of Baal. And if you know what Baal is in the Bible, it's the party where you literally sacrifice children on an altar to Satan. Okay, the the satanic ritual throughout history has always been that of sacrificing children, killing innocent life. And the Canaanites did it. Many pagan cultures have done it. Many satanic um, cults have done it. Over they're all satanic, but explicitly satanic cults have that that's their ritual killing babies drinking their blood sacrificing them it's no different today planned parenthood uh is essentially the new arm of baal worship it's the same thing it is a worship that centers around child sacrifice and sexual perversion and that is exactly what they're trying to do that's what they're trying to push they're trying to get gender changes for convicted criminals uh, in prison. I mean, it, it's disgusting. It is disgusting. And for anyone to say, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris. I don't believe you're a Christian. You need to read the Bible and understand what a Christian is. You don't understand what Christianity is. And you can say you're a Christian all day long. Hitler would have claimed the same thing. Uh, but you're not. Uh, a Christian has to abide by fundamental truth in the scripture. Uh, if you are for letting people murder babies even after they're born which is disgusting they they try so hard to lie about this it is true they can decide once that baby's born if they want to administer life-saving care to it or just let it die it's disgusting um and then they want to sh they want to make us out to be the extremists because we dare say that it's wrong to murder an innocent person's life it's my body, it's my body. Okay, that might be true, but it, you have someone else's body in your body. So that argument doesn't matter. It, it might be your body, but even if even if it was a child conceived in rape, it is still a human life, and you have no right to extinguish it. You are a murderer if you do that. Anyway, I've made a lot of friends today, but um, man, you just look at all that. You, you look at the transgender mess, the homosexual mess, all of this, they parade it. It's their battle cry. 
Uh, we want a society where we have gays being celebrated. I mean, look at the 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 two do. I don't even want to know what to call them. The it's in Biden's administration. It's it's embarrassing. It's sickening. I have no friends now, but I got what I wanted to say. Wake up, America. Wake up, Christians. And just because someone says they're a Christian means squat. Read the Bible. Read what Jesus said, and that'll tell you who to vote for.